Yeah, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 1% of you are aware of Fiverr. This will change dramatically, hopefully, uh, during the next 15 minutes. Um, Fiverr is all about getting access to context information. Context information describing what's happening around us, what, when, where, and why. But very often, this information are organized in silos, because data models don't fit to each other, APIs don't fit or are not open, uh, company policies do not support the provision and exchange of data. Our mission at Fiverr is to break down the silos and make data available for smart solutions. So we are coming more from the solution layer, from the application layer, but we need connectivity to get access to the data. Connectivity in massive IoT, and here definitely uh, the low power wide area networks uh, are dominating the market, like LoRaWAN, like uh, Sigfox, um, coming more into the areas of broadband IoT, critical IoT, um, autonomously driving cars, um, automating industrial processes. Uh, we will see how much portion LoRa will be able to gain in the future and how much uh, new uh, um, cellular protocols we'll get, uh, like the 5G uh, new radio protocol, um, which uh, has, of course, a higher bandwidth, um, uh, low latency, uh, things we need for these uh, areas. But uh, as you heard yesterday, as you heard today, uh, LoRa in massive IoT is dominating the access to data. So what's Fiverr? Fiverr is a set of open source platform components of open source building blocks, roughly 30 in total. All are available on GitHub. Uh, all are open source, available for everyone for free, forever. And out of these uh, building blocks, the Fiverr context broker is the most important of these building blocks. We call these building blocks generic enablers. And you see on the left side the very simplified architecture of a Fiverr-based solution. In the center, there is the context broker. Southbound, the interfaces to get access to the data, where we are using uh, LoRaWAN and other technologies. And northbound, we have functionalities to um, process, to analyze, to visualize data. And in a more detailed architecture, in this case for smart cities, but we are also uh, using this technology in the areas of uh, smart agri-food, of smart energy, and of smart industry and Industry 4.0. Um, you see, again, the context broker in the center. Then southbound, this NGSI-based, and NGSI is our standard interface, next generation service interface. That's the standard interface which uh, all modules on the top. So we have functionalities for big data, we have uh, artificial intelligence, we have uh, geo-information systems integrated, um, workflow management functionalities, and so on. All are using NGSI, and this NGSI agent framework is transferring different protocols into NGSI. To get access to data coming from sensors, and we hear around, we hear a lot of sensors, connected via LoRa, LoRaWAN, um, but we are managing also other data coming from other IT systems, coming from social media, and so on. So all different sources of data. And one important source here is this IoT agent, which transfers different protocols. And one of these IoT agents is um, the LoRaWAN IoT agent, which has been developed by one of our partners, uh, the company ATOS, that's the company where I'm coming from, um, a global system integrator, 120,000 uh, employees worldwide, and uh, they have uh, implemented this LoRaWAN IoT agent. On the left side, the nodes, on the right side, the Fiverr-based application. And there are three different ways to do so. One is uh, to have the network and also the applications, application service integrated into the gateway. Second option is to have the network server and application server separated from the gateway and using, uh, for example, uh, the Things Network. Or the third version 
is to have it fully decoupled. So on the left side, the nodes, then the gateway, then the network server, the application server, and finally, the Fiverr IoT agent, which transfers this information into the NGSI data format. Why NGSI? Because NGSI, the next generation service interface, became last year, since uh, January 24th of 2019, the formal standard for context information management in smart cities. Standardized by Etsy, it was a de facto standard in a lot of countries before, and now it is a formal standard. The standard to get information, to get access to information describing what's happening in a city. A major achievement for the Fiverr ecosystem. And then, together with TM Forum, TM Forum is a global organization of telco and IT companies. Together with them, we are working on defining the ontology, so defining common data models, um, a data model describing a smart water management solution, a smart lighting solution, uh, to further enable the uh, replicability of a solution from one city to the other. And this is end-user driven, so we have um, we started this uh, one year ago at the Smart City Expo World Congress in Barcelona, where, by the way, uh, six, uh, six weeks ago I met uh, Wienke and we, we met each other and he said that could be a good enhancement for our conference, so he invited me to come here. And um, coming back to this um, program, the so-called Frontrunner Smart Cities program, this is end-user driven. Initially, 12 cities, 10 from Europe, plus La Plata from uh, Argentina and uh, Montevideo from Uruguay uh, started to define these data models. And uh, on the right side, the core component of Fiverr, the context broker, has been selected by all European member states to become a standard open source building block now recommended by the European Commission to the member states to be used when creating digital solution. It enhances a so far existing list of five of these building blocks you see them listed down. For example, all national ID cards in Europe are using EID. Yeah, that is, this is one of these so-called CEF building blocks, Connecting Europe Facility, one of the big programs to create the digital single market of the European Commission. In the meantime, more than 140 cities in 30 different countries are building their smart cities using these standards which have been created in the Fiverr ecosystem. Some from Australia, uh, you see here, for example, uh, in Brisbane, Gold Coast, and so on, but many different other uh, countries in Europe, in South America. Uh, Japan is starting now, so uh, we are getting more and more adoption on a global scale. I'm representing the Fiverr Foundation, a non-for-profit organization, and we have a large network of uh, companies creating solutions um, using this technology. And Several of them are on the Fiverr marketplace that has been introduced um, 12 months ago, uh, showing Fiverr-based platforms following the architecture I showed to you before, and then a lot of applications on top of the platforms for smart lighting, smart waste management, smart water management, and so on. Some examples. Um, this is from Engineering, an Italian company, a smart city platform called the City Enabler. It's an implementation of the reference architecture I showed to you before. Similar from NEC from Japan, they call it the Cloud City Operation Center. Or ATOS, they call it the ATOS Urban Data Platform. All following and implementing the same reference architecture using similar open source Fiverr building blocks, supporting, and that's very important, Fiverr NGSI as a standard interface and uh, the standard API. In total, in the ecosystem, 12 of these platforms from different providers. And then, Atos, um, or some, some examples here, uh, and this was mentioned in the introduction, um, a LoRa uh, project uh, Atos did uh, in two Spanish, Spanish airports, uh, simply monitoring the operation of the bathrooms uh, on the airport. So is there sufficient paper, is there sufficient soap, uh, temperature, and so on, using LoRa as a transportation protocol to get access to this context information describing how a bathroom is doing on the airport. 
Or another solution uh, Atos did, this is a very simple one, and I took it because it's here from the Netherlands, from Eindhoven, uh, where there is a street called Stratum Seind. That's the mayor of Eindhoven. And this Stratum Seind is a short street, one kilometer long, 55 bars, a lot of alcohol, and a high crime rate in the past. And what they did is they installed cameras, identifying the moving patterns of the people. So it's GDPR compliant, the faces are pixeled in the camera, uh, no personal information, but the information how the people are moving. Second, microphones, identifying uh, or doing sound analytics. Again, not speech recognition, but sound analytics. And third one is social media analytics. What's posted in Facebook and Twitter with relation to the street in this moment of time? bringing this context information together, comparing it with historical data, the system is able, using artificial intelligence, to predict critical situations in the street. So not only to identify them, but to predict them. And this information is given to the police officer in the control room. He gets the right pictures in front of him, and he can now decide, or she, um, to send proactively police people there because he gets an information, in five minutes it will, be, will become critical in this point of the street. Or he has the ability to increase the level of light. Eindhoven is the headquarter of Philips, and they have uh, lighting by segment in the street, and in more than 80% of the cases it is sufficient to increase the light to de-escalate an upcoming critical situation. And it is proven that the crime rate has been reduced by more than 50%, the damages in the bars have been reduced, the police people are used more efficiently, and the image of the street and the city has been increased. So maybe some of you know this street and uh, also this um, application. Going to South America. Um, South America is a city not working together with the system integrator. They learned about five there three years ago in Barcelona and uh, asked their IT department, please build up Fiverr know-how, use this open source building block, use the standard API, use the uh, reference architecture. In the meantime, they have a full-blown smart city platform, uh, managing the traffic, managing the uh, public transportation, actually working on a solution. They have installed a lot of sensors in the city, connected by LoRaWAN, um, and uh, actually using this sensor data, enhancing this by hydrological and methodological um, models to create a pre-warning system uh, for the citizens in the city, because they quite often have heavy rain situations in the backlands, causing situations like this, flooding situations in the city, and the apps of the citizens are intelligence. They learn where, for example, my car is parked, and I get, as a citizen, an individualized message there where your car is parked, with 90% probability, in 20 minutes, there will be a meter of rain. So it might be better to remove your car and uh, bring it to uh, a higher situation. And that's Uruguay, yeah? Uruguay in South America. It's uh, fantastic. I've been there now three times. It's uh, really amazing what they are doing. Last example, um, from Spain, the region of Barajos, um, it's the, or the province of Barajos. It's the largest province in Spain but only small cities. Barajos has 150,000 people, and then there are a lot of cities, 50,000, 30,000, 20,000. They decided not to do a smart city project for each of the cities, but for the whole province. This is based on uh, thinking city from Telefonica. So again, same reference architecture, and, 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 you learned it. On the platform, there are 29 different smart solutions, actually, starting at the top left, smart waste management, smart lighting, smart water, and so on. And the cities can pick the solutions, the smart solutions which fit to them. And the platform itself provides data analytics, provides KPIs. So they are starting now to do benchmarking between the cities, where can one city learn from the other, and dashboards, and so on. Um, this, by the way, is also a success story of this European program connecting Europe facilities. Why are all the cities doing this? The basic components of the software are open source, so they are free, they are available for everyone. There is a large ecosystem of developers, a large Fiverr ecosystem, maintaining and further developing these uh, building blocks. 
On our technical roadmap, there is artificial intelligence, integration of distributed ledger, robot integration, edge computing. That are the four main topics. And there is a large group of startups on the one side and global corporates which are using this technology to create solutions for the end users, solutions and products. And with this, the Pfizer ecosystem is able to create and to provide the lowest cost of ownership for the end users. And finally, and this is maybe the most important thing, using standard data models, using open APIs, Pfizer-based solutions are providing and avoiding the so-called vendor lock-in effect. All this technology was developed in a public-private partnership of the European Commission with a lot of European companies. It was called the Future Internet PPP. That's where this FI in Fiverr is coming from, so Future Internet Ware. And um, in total, 500 million euro were invested into the development of the technology and the ecosystem around. 300 million public funding from the European Commission, 100 million from the private side, from the companies, and in the meantime, an additional 100 million from venture capitalists who started to invest into companies building solutions based on Fiverr. And we have several venture capitalists uh, in our ecosystem looking for companies who need money to bring their Fiverr-based solutions to the market. So if you're interested, just give me a note. And to bring all this investment into a sustainable future, the Fiverr Foundation was created three years ago. The Fiverr history started in 2011, and the foundation, now three years old, similar to Linux Foundation, OpenStack Foundation, um, and uh, we are a non-for-profit founded by four companies, Atos, Engineering, Orange, and Telefonica. Now we are more than 300 members from all over the world. And if you would like to learn more about Fiverr, I agreed with Winke that uh, I'll be here, he will be at our summit, in Malaga, in Spain, on June 23, 24. So if you like, would like to learn more how your connectivity, your sensors, could be used to create smart solutions in the, in the application stack, uh, you're more than welcome to join us in Malaga, in the beautiful city of Malaga in June. It will be perfect weather, I'm pretty sure, and it will be a lot of fun during these uh, two days in Malaga. That's Fiverr, the open source platform technology for our smart digital future. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Ulrich. Uh, very nice uh, also to hear the great steps forward if it concerns standardization. Um, you're working on LoRa technology all around the world, but I also read that you are uh, applying LoRa in Lego City. Yeah. Um, that's uh, something we are working on a project called Smart Mobility as a Service, um, providing solutions uh, to help people from get, to get from A to B using different modes of transportation, uh, bike uh, sharing, car sharing, flight bus, and so on, managing the people during the trip, and you have to pay the whole trip just with one ticket. That's the idea. And to visualize this, we built a large Lego demonstrator three by four meters yeah. with a lot of functionalities and we had it in uh, five global events last year and it is the eye catcher and uh, um, not yet LoRa functionality in but uh, most probably Close. for the Malaga event uh, we will have also uh, LoRa in there. One more reason to go to Malaga. Yeah. Thank you very much Ulrich Allen. Thank you.